I'm Tyrone. This is Heroes Rise, The Prodigy, Chapter 2, By The Roots. And we've already started, so let's continue. Once upon a time, your parents, the sound and the fury... Oh, this is going to be a bit serious. Once upon a time, your parents, the sound and the fury, were Millennia City's most famous powered couple... Kind of like a power couple. Powered couple. Power couple, powered couple. When they met in high school, they discovered that your mother's ability to generate vocal sonic waves perfectly complemented your father's ability to harness sound energy. Almost immediately after they arrived on MC's hero scene, the public became enamored, enamored with their budding romance and their harm, harmonious power set. As they rose rapidly to the hero A-list, no villain was too dangerous for them to battle and no party was too exclusive for them to attend. This meant that you got to spend your childhood immersed in MC's finest hero high life, knowing that someday you'd fight alongside your parents as a famous hero, assuming you had powers. Until your 13th birthday, it was going to be the best night of your life, the first time your powers might begin to manifest. Your parents were at a press conference speaking about one of their recent successes, shutting down an assassin training academy, masquerading as a public high school. They were supposed to say a few words about the mission and then come straight home to celebrate your big night. However, just as they were preparing to leave, a young villainess crashed the event. She was Miss Artillery, one of the Assassin Academy's teachers. She entered ranting about how the sound and the fury had ruined her life. She quickly went on the offensive with her power to generate weaponry, and your parents moved to apprehend her, but for some strange reason, perhaps because they were in such a rush to get home to you, they miscalculated their joint attack. In what became the biggest news story of the year, the sound and the fury murdered Miss Artillery by liquefying her brain, snapping her spine, blowing out her heart. Um, I'm gonna go with blowing out her heart. It's a bit more poetic, liquefying her brain. Well, liquefying her brain would be f fucked up. She'd be a vegetable. Snapping her spine, their powers don't seem to work right. Um, now I'm going to go with liquefying her brain, just because maybe she survived, and that would be m more horrifying than uh, than any of the results of the others. While your father used his sound enhanced strength to restrain Miss Artillery, your mother aimed to disable her with a quick sonic blast. You still don't know whether your mother misjudged the strength of the blast, or your father miscalculated the angle. Either way, when the blast cleared, Miss Artillery dropped in your father's arms, pink matter oozing from her nostrils. Ooh, fucking hell. This certainly wasn't the first time a hero had accidentally used fatal force against a villain. Traditionally, this mistake would require a fair amount of community service and a hefty fine, especially with heroes of your parents' calibre. However, this accident came on the heels of a recent string of excessive hero and villain brutality, and their case fell into the hands of Judge Victor, an up and comer who, an up and comer who was making a play to become MC's mayor, deciding that a harsh ruling would set the perfect example for his, his zero tolerance campaign against heroic brutality. <coughs> deciding that a harsh ruling would set the perfect example for his zero tolerance campaign against heroic brutality, Judge Victon passed the harshest sentence ever given to any powered hero. I mean, it's kind kind of understandable actually. That's a big fuck up. Like I get, like you, you're not really allowed. Like if someone tries robbing you, you're not really allowed to kill them. If someone tries killing you, it can it can be a balance. Or uh, there's excessive force, and if they were going to liquefy her brain, that's a big misstep. Like how hard were they hitting her without trying to liquefy her brain? That's. It shouldn't just be one millimetre off your brain is goo. They, they should be a balance. Like, if, if I punch you, it shouldn't be, oh, I, I punch you an inch higher and it snaps your neck and turns it 360 degrees. So, deciding, but back to the point. Deciding that a harsh ruling would set the perfect example for a zero tolerance campaign against heroic brutality, Judge Victim passed the harshest sentence ever given to any powered hero. Citing a murderous misuse of power, powered ability, he says that. Sorry about my chair. I really need a new one that doesn't squeak. 
citing a murderous misuse of power and ability. He sentenced your heroes to he sentenced your parents to a life term in the Devoid, a maximum security facility for powers. Without visitation rights. Like that's the biggest kicker. The last time you saw your parent, I don't even think a judge can really do that. The last time you, that's just against human rights. The last time you saw your parents was on the day of the infam infamous sentencing. Right before the police escorted them to the, the divide. You'll never forget the image of your mother and father in orange jumpsuits handcuffed in shame, their spirits broken. Judge Victor wouldn't even let them hug you goodbye. Your mother couldn't stop crying as the police escorted her away, but as your dad followed, he turned to you and said the words that you'd come to live by. Don't let this stop you, Eliana. Become a hero. For us. Uh, I, I want him to sound much more like an actor. Don't let this... Ha ha! Don't let this stop you, Eliana. Become a hero. For us. Your father could not have known the profound effect those words would have on you. Especially after his unjust treat treatment at the hands of the legal system. As a result, you have very strong beliefs regarding the law. I always follow the law in order to avoid my parents' fate. However, I don't necessarily mind getting a bit creative with the law if situation absolutely calls for it. I have no problem with breaking the law, but I try to follow it whenever it seems reasonable enough. I have absolutely no respect for the law. I know that I have to live by my own rules. Well, we already break the law just to fly around, so that's not really only necessary when only necessary. That's not really getting creative, is it? So, uh, and I, I don't think I just do my own rules, so I, I have no problem with the breaking the law, but I try to follow it whenever it seems reasonable enough. After the trial, your parents considered considerable fortune was transferred to Miss Artillery's estate and you were assigned to live with your own living relative, your grandma. However, moving in with her wasn't so simple. Over the course of their careers, your parents had amassed a deadly collection of enemies, each of whom would be thrilled to seek revenge on the sound and the few is now defenseless family. So the court, so the court enrolled you and grandma in the Powered Family Protection Program, PFPP. There's a lot of different acronyms to remember. In, in this game. I mean, you don't really have to remember them, but a lot of acronyms. You and, you and Grandma were given brand new identities. The Sterling name was assigned to you. Which suggests why it's not very Russian, like Ileana. Though you, you at least got to keep the, your first name, Grandma suddenly found herself forced to live on a pitiful PFPP stipend. Had to move you into a small apartment on the Eastern Fridges. She also had to pull you out of your fancy, powered-only private school and enroll you in the local public school. In the course for a few short months, your life became entirely unrecognisable to you, and it has never been the same since. That's why every day, you mind yourself who you really are. Your real family name, name is... Apple. Really? Tri Tricamo. Apple. Castan. Rosado. Lee. Rizzo, Dector, Ito. I'm gonna. Have, I'm just gonna Google some Russian surnames. I mean, Rio should have given us a Russian accent, but we we were raised in America apparently. So um, is some reason we got a Yorkshire accent out of that, but. Surnames. Well, maybe it's just his dad who was Russian. Maybe our mum was was from Yorkshire. Maybe they moved us cross country. I mean, I know they didn't, but Russian surnames. Common Russian surnames. The most common surname in Russia is Smirnov. So yeah, we, we, we've got a Yorkshire accent. His grandma's got an American one. Our dad sounded like a sort of really generic action man. So 
maybe the it's an old family name. Maybe it's is from way back when, even before World War One. So Ileana Smirnoff was no more, giving giving way instead to Ileana Sterling. And you found the Sterling version of yourself was vastly diff vastly different. Forced to grow up way faster. That's a lot of fast in, in one, one sentence than anyone ever should. Back in the kitchen, you looked across the table at Grandma. She's the only person in the world who, who understands how you feel. After all, she was forced to abandon the life she had built up for over 70 years to enter the PFPP with you. Despite this, Grandma has still managed to start over and find a way to be happy once again. And without her, you, you have, you'd have an, and without her, you'd have had no shot at becoming a hero. I'm, I'm doing that posh accent. Uh, thank you. Thank, thanks, Gran. Thank you, Gran. Thank you, Gran. You repeat, fighting against the lump forming in your throat. Oh, hush up, Grandma says, wiping at her cheeks. No, oh, not the cheeks on her face. <laughs> so that's really obnoxious. What are you waiting for? You've got a career to start. You run into your room where you've made sure not to keep any plants since you don't need grandma's best spies hanging around. It's decorated plainly, but what truly makes the room yours is a wall filled with framed posters of your favourite powered heroes. Featured, cent featured centrally are your parents in their classic sound and fury costumes right next to your favourite powered heroes, Hero Rebellion. She's been your idol since you were a little kid. You've got plenty of other posters on your hero worship wall, but whose career do you want to emulate most? The team players or the solo heroes? Rebellion, the leader of, Millennium, of the Millennium Group, MC's number one power team. The Everyman Brigade, MC's most prominent work for, work for hire team. Static, the Eastern Fridge's current champion. Black Magic, MT's latest hero, Heartthrob. I don't want to be a solo um, superhero because you've got less support. What you really want is um, people by your side because you, superheroes get arrogant and they think they could take it on one on one and then you'll learn the power of friendship. If you've got someone there with you, they'll have your back and be like, oh, I'll, I'll always have. I'm always by your side. I've always got your back. I'm your buddy. I'm your number one guy. It doesn't matter that we don't always see eye to eye. We're a team. And we work together. But. I also want to make money. So every, every man. Do I, do I want to be. Just push myself and be the best. I don't want a leader. Or do I want to be a part of the Everyman Brigade. MC's most prominent work for hire team. I kind of like the work for hire theme. Doesn't sound right for her though, so I'm gonna have to go for this character. So I'm gonna have to go with Rebellion, even though I want to be Everyman Brigade, MC's most prominent work for high team. Because I don't think they're gonna have team skills. I don't think they're gonna support each other. Whereas if I'm like Rebellion, I'll work as a team together. Rebellion was initially raised among the meek. The fervent anti powered cult. She eventually broke free of their influence to become a shining symbol of powered progress, doing everything from fighting the fighting in the Third World War. Oh Christ, the Third World War. When, when's this set? To receiving the very fast millennia city's hero of tomorrow. Hot. Other acronym. And making it to the highest honor possible for any aspiring hero. Rebellion also reshaped the millennial group which had been MC's most famous power team for decades. The group had gone through countless roster changes, the history of which you know by heart, of course. Just like the X-Men. Today's the group consists of Rebellion, the team's long-standing lead, the Diva, the wickedly powerful team matriarch, Fistful, the steroid po <laughs> Fistful, the steroid pumping muscle from New Jersey. That doesn't sound like a hero. <clears throat> that sounds like a roid head. Monk, a spiritual guru, guru turned hero. Processor, 
an artificial intelligence strategist and inform information hub. Sounds like most generic team heroes and there's a car going past. I like Fistful, I'm gonna have fun with Fistful and Diva. The first three are good, the, the, the other two, I don't care for them much. Every morning you stay, stare at the hero wall and envision what your own poster will look like among the, these famous heroes. Peeling your eyes away, your attention wanders down to the video game you're supposed to be testing. Now that you have your license, you can finally quit the game testing job. Since there are dozens of ways for heroes to earn a living, most of these paid jobs are very difficult to obtain though. You've heard the horror stories about endless lines of the DRPR to collect powered hero unemployment. <clears throat> Still, you don't think twice about tossing the video game into the trash and re reaching for your single most prized possession, your conduit costume. As you suit up, you pull the mask over your face to protect your identity, even though no one will, would ever recognise you as the sound and the fewest child man, and that you're all grown up. You don't need anyone discovering your sterling identity and coming after grandma. You've been perfecting the right costume for a long time since your calling card as a hero. So, uh, you've been protect. You've been yeah. You've been perfecting the right costume for a long time since it's your calling card as a hero. Knowing this, you've chosen your. You've chosen a color scheme that's all tones of black and metal grey for intimidation. Bright and bold primary colors to get noticed. Black and bronze, the color of Millennium City's flag. Oh shit, flag. That's just miserable. Blue and gold, the color. The colors of my favorite hero, Rebellion. And red and silver, the colors of my parents. Sound and fury, cost fury costumes. Go with red and silver. It might cause some controversy. Like someone might be like, "Oh, you're inspired by sound and fury. Didn't they kill a person?" But I don't want to. I don't want to go for blue and gold, because what if we end up with a team with rebellion? They might not be quite happy about that. Maybe they would. Maybe they're a nice person, but you don't want to step on people's toes. It's like wrestling. You don't want to steal someone's gimmick and then start working with them. I don't want the Millennium Falcon. That's, that's an ugly flag. Imagine if your flag was just black and bronze. Bright and gold primary. I, I like that. And the Intimidation one. I don't care for the Intimidation one. I'll go with red and silver though because it's my parents. And, and obviously we care a lot about them. Every time you put on your costume, you can't wait to use your powers. So you snap your fingers, generating a small pop of energy, which also happens to be your favourite colour. A lot of tedious stuff going into this. I hope it's um, there's a lot of like psycho. Uh, I hope there's a lot of psychology going into the decisions we make. So far, a lot of the decisions don't seem to really have an effect on the game. Like our, our choices, they're not leading to different routes. I don't feel like. But I hope that this goes into the psychology of it, like, oh, if you're black, oh, you're, you're, you're a bit darker. And if you go for the intimidating costume, you've got, you've got to be a quite an angsty hero, maybe. Um, there's no green, I like green. Oh, well, it can't, because it keeps on having to choose your own colour, it's not going to recognise everything. I'll go with blue. As the pop of blue energy fades, you look over your costume in the mirror, knowing that style without substance means very little. You've also chosen the design and features that amplify your powers. Truth be told, you'd have been able to afford your hero license way sooner if you hadn't spent much money on your most prized upgrade. Aerodynamic round curves and small back wings for maximum speed. A rocket... Pardon me? A rock... <laughs> A rocket backpack to channel excess energy and add propulsion to my normal speed flying. Large metal wristbands that store energy for blasting. Um, so two of these, one of these makes us overall faster, one of these Gives us a bit of propulsion, and one of them that is star energy. I'm gonna go for that one, so we can add propulsion to our normal speed of flying. This offensive upgrade allows you to fly at normal speeds without lowering your power level. Oh, that's what it does. So this offensive upgrade allows you to fly at normal speeds without lowering your power level. 
an invaluable resource while in the field. Oh. As you, conduit, stand there in your perfect costume and with all your intentions set, you realise that you're finally ready to start your hero career. But becoming a legendary hero means more than just fulfilling your own dreams, it's also about redeeming the Smirnoff name. You have one ultimate goal, to become an A-list hero and reveal the Millennia City that you're actually the Sound and the Fury's child. You know that achieving this level of success is the only way to restore the honour to your parents and redeem your family's legacy in the hero world. And because it's so important to your end goal, one central question constantly plagues you. In your rise to become a legend, is it more important to focus on achieving, achieving fame or upholding justice? I'll need everyone to know my name to get to the top. I don't care what they're saying as long as they're talking about me. Having people know who I am is always going to help, but only if my reputation of hero is worthwhile. It's vital that I uphold justice first and foremost, but that doesn't mean I can't smile for the press once a mission is accomplished. Once a mission is accomplished. Always doing the right thing will make me a hero worthy of legend. I'll get to the top by never com <coughs> compromising my commitment to justice. So the first one, we're obviously not going to go with that. It doesn't seem right for the character to just be like, Oh my god. Thank you for being a hero, everybody. And just doing press events, it doesn't make sense. I don't, that's not a slag off. I'm not slagging off Valley Girls. It's just the generic accent for someone who's a bit shallow, isn't it? Having people know I am always but my reputation here is worthwhile. Uh, I'm going to go if it's vital. I uphold justice first and foremost, but that doesn't mean I can't smile for the press once a mission's accomplished, because that's what your, your parents seem to do. They were at a press uh, conference on your birthday, and then we're going to visit you when the accident happens. So obviously that's the kind of thing they were up to. Having the courage to begin your hero rise, your legend has already increased. Your legend, led up, your legend level is the most important meter for gorging your success in the hero world, and it's affected not only by the decisions you make, but also by any fluctuations in your public image. Rebellion's legend is the highest on record, an astounding hundred. So that's your ultimate goal. Your legend level is tracked on your hero license. You flip it over and you see you've got a long way to go since your current legend is a lowly one. I mean, makes sense. It's a bit weird that it's on your license. Imagine if driver's license has just had like your popularity as a driver on. Very one punch man system going on. You sign and place your license on your desk since the plastic version is only a keepsake. The official version of your license has already been scanned and uploaded to your Mi chip. A bit personal tablet technology embedded in the underside of your wrist. Not too long ago, people used paper slips to pay for the things and little plastic devices as phones. But that was before all communication, identification, entertainment, and banking functions became standard in Mi chips. Each Mi chip comes fully customizable with robotic personality. Pro programming that adapts to your habits and desires. There are three standard templates of available for the robotic personality, so you decide to go with the polite butler, the sassy diva, the supportive caretaker. The polite butler's the standard in it, that's very Jarvis Iron Man. Kinda want a sassy diva, and supportive caretaker. You've got, you've already got a supportive character in you. The grandma, so that doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go Sassy Diva, Polite Butler, Sassy Diva, Polite Butler. We don't, uh, they're all named after people to do with films. Let's see, there's a sorry Whedon, Abrams, Nolan, Vaughn, Moore, Volante. Well, most of them are. At least the first three or four are. Oh, an Alan Moore comic book. Oh. I'm gonna call him Weed in there. Warmest regards on your license, madam. Me, Chip Weedon says inside your head with a slight British accent. Oh. All Me, Chip functions are connected directly to your sensors. 
so weed and floats in front of your eyes and put holographic imaging wired to your retinas. Only you are able to see Mijit Weedon, who appears as a slender gentleman wearing a full tuxedo. Best of luck launching your career. Thanks, Weedon. Thanks, Weedon. You say, smiling. Then take a moment to check your. Oh, God. Sorry about the chair. Jesus. I'm going to have a biscuit as well. I might not even cut it out. I will cut this out, maybe. Um, 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 uh. Then take a moment to check your hero statistics by clicking on the show stats button located at the top of the screen. The choices you make throughout your career will be reflected in the statistics and levels listed here. You also know that in turn these stats and levels will significantly affect the course of your hero career. The choices you make will have very real consequences, so be sure to choose wisely. Whedon, you say, move the show stats button to my home screen and you all look insane taking those elect oh. You all look insane talking to those electronic voices in your head. In your heads. I'm not sure if that's the grandma's voice, it don't matter. Gra gr gr grandma says from the doorway. That's why I simply refuse to have one of those machines implanted in me, it just doesn't seem right. I know how you feel about me, Chips Gran. You say, turning towards me. And it's annoying because you know, because now that you they've done away with the landlines and cell phones, there's no way of getting in touch with you. Which is precisely how I like it. This is her voice now. Oh, look at you, a born smurn of hero. It's definitely not her original voice. <laughs> well, this born hero had better get out of here. Get out of. Well, this born hero had better get out there, he says, shaking off your nerves. This career isn't gonna going to start itself. Wait, before you go... Grandma walks towards you and sees... And, <clears throat> and you see that she holds an envelope in her hands and your stomach drops. It's such a big day. It's such a big day, Gran says, her eyes on the floor. They'd want to be here so badly. Your jaw goes tight. You know exactly what Grandma wants to do wants you to do. While the devoid may not allow its prisoners to have any visitors, it does permit them to receive letters. So for years you wrote to your parents telling them everything about your life. Your thoughts writing those letters. You thought writing those letters would make you feel better, but it only made you feel worse. Because the devoid doesn't allow its prison prisoners to write any letters back. It's been years since you've written anything. Grandma looks up at you and your heart feels like it might break. I'm sorry, say, but you know how I feel about this, Gran. You don't write your letters, or you don't write letters to your parents anymore because it's too painful. I'm angry. I'm angry that my parents had to abandon me. I need to learn how to live without them. I don't know what to say. Um. This one, this, this is a hard choice, this is the first difficult choice the game's really given us. Is it too painful? She... Mm. I mean, they did blickify someone's brain. I'm angry that my parents had to abandon me. Sure she'd be angry with the guy who convicted them, I guess. She knows he was just doing it for a push, for a bid for me. I need to learn how to live without them. I mean, you've been living out without them for a long time, so I don't th I don't think I'll go with that one. I don't know what to say. It's between I don't, it's too painful. I don't know what to say. But I go if I don't know what to say. I spent years hoping that your parents would somehow find a way back to you, but after all that wasted effort, you finally accepted the truth. 
No one ever escapes a life sentence in the Devoid. It's like writing, a le writing letters to ghosts. After a while, what's the point? All right, Ileana, Grand Grandma says, fighting to keep her face even. Now listen to me. Please be careful out there. Lord knows I won't be able to sleep until you're home. I will, Gran. I promise. Then off you go, she says, drumming up a smile. And do try to kick some butt, yes? Ready to go, you step on, you step up on your window's 14th story ledge. Look out over the grandeur of Millennia City. One of the one of the one of the advantages of living in the eastern fringes is the spectacular view of MC's iconic skyline. You take a deep breath, letting the energy of the city run through you. Standing on this precipice, you can't help but wonder what kind of hero you will become, and will you be able to survive long enough to achieve the legend status you crave? The choice is up to you. You think of yourself. You think to. The choice is up to you. You think to yourself right before you jump off the ledge. Next chapter, the lower case. So that's been Hero Rise the Prodigy, chapter two. Um, I'm probably gonna continue at least all through this this one. It's a three part series. And um, I mean, they do have other games. If I, if I really enjoy playing these series, I, keep, I go through all the Heroes Rise. They've got a couple of different types of games. I think they've done some more Hero Rise project ones. I think they even have a website where you can make your own. So if anyone's interested in making a kind of choose your own adventure style game, you can look that up. But anyway, I've been Tyrone. I've not been Tyrone, I've been Ileana, right? I've been Ileana Smirnoff. And you have been here, maybe, watching, hopefully. Until the end, possibly. And if you feel like it, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. You know what to do, it's YouTube, it doesn't matter. And goodbye. Alright, just as I... I, I, I the, the video isn't over. No, the video isn't over. It just, um... When I finished then, I was looking through the menus and stuff. And I've just seen here, we can... <clears throat> we could already look at our level, see our relationship, stuff like that. So, um, see our relationship, see see where we are, uh, what what we want to do, you know. And um, <sighs> hi, the uh, wait, wait wait don't turn off don't 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 turn off the video. I was I was just looking through the menus and stuff, and I can actually see where we are as a hero. So um, fame thirty seven percent, justice sixty three percent. We care a lot more about justice than we do about fame. Lawless, we're pretty lawless. We're not we're not completely, but we're we're as lawless as we are justice based. Which you know we we might end up being being a, a bit of a nut job. If that's the case, people could do a lot of things if they think they're in the right. Um, offensive and defensive, we're a little bit more offensive, but we're not huge. Soloist and team player, we're a bit more of a team player. Power 100, health 100. Money 2,100, like it said at the beginning of the game. And as legend is one, like it said. Family, 90%. Viction, Victon. Vic, I, 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 don't, I don't remember who that is. Well, um, we've got family 90% or 10% someone else earn, un and we've got 50% with unknown people, because obviously we don't know them yet, we don't know them enough to shit all over them, or like, for them to like us, or what. But that now that has actually been Hero Rise of the Prodigy, I have been Tyrone, and you've been fantastic, so goodbye.